Father, we thank you and we praise you for your word, which is the truth. We do receive your word, written in our heart, written in our mind. We thank you for the revelation of it. We will be hearers and doers of it. And we thank you. It will bring forth much fruit. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Please be seated if you would. We've been sharing with you on the subject of the works of God. We talked about understanding works, talked about the different kinds of works that there are. Tonight we're going to talk about the results of good and bad works. We want the good works and the results, but we also got to be aware of the bad results. We must point out the scripture that we've given each time. James 2.24 says, You see then how that, a man, that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. That is an important principle for all Christians. The teaching that says that we are justified or made righteous by faith alone is not true. The word says that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. What kind of works? Not works of the flesh or works of man, he does, it's works of faith. Works of faith. As we have faith, receiving Jesus, getting born again, and we do works of faith, walking in line with the word of God, following him, then we will be declared righteous and justified. That is an important principle for everybody to understand. Now, we're going to talk about different kinds of works. We see beginning in Matthew chapter 23. So we'll be looking at bad works and good works and seeing the results of them. Because we want to have the good works so we can get the blessings of God coming forth. It says in Matthew 23, verse 3, all therefore, whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. This is talking about the religious people. They would say one thing and they would do another. They were hypocritical. You can't say one thing and do another. He said, they say and do not, don't do after their works. No, we've got to walk in line with the word. We've got to do it the works of God, what the word of God says, and be obedient and not be one of these that say one thing and then end up doing another. God calls those people hypocrites, and he is not going to see blessings come upon them. We see in verse 5, he says, All their works they do for to be seen of men. Don't do anything to be seen of men. Do everything unto the Lord. They make broad their phylacteries, large their borders, their garments, and love the uppermost rooms at the feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues. Greetings in the markets to be called men, rabbi, rabbi, and we're not supposed to call them that anymore. He says, be not ye called a rabbi. Why do we have people around the world calling men rabbi when the New Testament expressly says you don't call them rabbi? For one is your master, even Christ, and you all are you, our brethren. We don't do things to be seen of men. He says, call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. That's our Father, our Heavenly Father. We see another whole group that refers to their leaders as Father so-and-so. Neither you be called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. The Word of God tells us the truth. He that's greatest among you shall be your servant. So we're to be a servant of all. We don't do things to be seen of men. We don't do things uh, to want to have any kind of the must be in the preeminence, the best seats, whatever it might be. No. We do everything unto the Lord. Any exalting that would come, God will do it, not us. We don't ever try to exalt ourselves. We see over in Matthew chapter 7, we saw that the one who had turned away from the Lord, in verse 23, this is the one who, if we go back to verse 20, we pointed this out each time. It says, Wherefore by their fruits you shall know them. Not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Notice, the person just calls him Lord isn't going to enter in necessarily. It's only the doers, consistent doers of the will of the Father. Many will say to me in that day, many is a majority, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? In thy name have cast out devils and name done many wonderful works. These people were born again. They did the works of God. He comes around and Jesus says, Then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. The word work is in the present tense. What were they continually working? 
The present tense in the Greek means continuous, ongoing action of the verb. So it means they were continually working. And the word iniquity means lawlessness. It's a word anomia. Otherwise, they were doing things contrary to God's word, which is spiritual law. Why did he say, I never knew you? Because, and for you who haven't heard this, this is important for you to understand for the subject of righteousness. If you heard it before, it'd be good to hear it again so you get this established in you. Ezekiel 18, verse 21. We must understand that God is a just God, and he is going to do exactly what is right, and he's just towards all. It says in verse 21, If the wicked will turn from all his sins that he's committed, keep all my statutes, do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. That's good. He's turned away from his sins. Now he's walking on the right path. All his transgressions, all the sins he committed in the past, he hath committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him. The word mention means remembered or called to, recalled or called to mind. Otherwise, I don't remember your sins anymore. You're now walking the ways of righteousness. You're doing the word. That's good. Isn't that what happens to us? We get born again. We follow the way of the Lord. All our sins are washed away. He doesn't remember our sins or iniquities anymore, the Bible says. In his righteousness that he has done, he shall live. Well, that's good news. But God's a just God. Suppose the opposite happens, as it says in verse 24. When the righteous turneth away from his righteousness and commits iniquity and doeth according to all the abominations that the wicked man doeth, shall he live? No, is the answer. All his righteousness, all the right things he did, the things of the word of God he did in the past, that he has done, shall not be, same word, remembered, recalled, or called to mind. It's as if they never happened. Just like for the other guy, it's as if his sins never happened. In this case, it's as if his righteousness never happened because he's not walking in righteousness anymore. He turned. Now he's walking in sin and iniquity. In his trespass that he's trespassed, in his sin that he's sinned, in them shall he die. What does that show you? That shows you why Jesus said, I never knew you. The reason he said that is because their righteousness was not remembered because they turned away from it. It was as if they'd never done it. Now, they were working continually lawlessness. That's why we must follow the way of the Lord and continue to follow the way of the Lord all the days of our life and never turn away from Him. We see over in John chapter 7. John chapter 7. Over here in verse 3, there were those who were brethren of Jesus, therefore said to him, Depart hence and go to Judea, that thy disciples may see the works that thou doest. He says, Go out there and show off your works, essentially. Now, Jesus didn't do that. He said, There's no man that doeth anything in secret. He himself seeketh to be known openly. Otherwise, Jesus, you should seek to be known openly. Go and show all your works to everybody. If thou do these things, show thyself to the world. Is that the way God does things? No. We don't do things to be seen of others or to prove ourselves to others. Well, he says, for neither did his brethren believe in him. They didn't believe in him. So they were just trying to get him to do this. He's not going to listen to them, of course. So do we need to prove ourselves to others? No, not at all. Just simply to God by obeying his word. God's the one who will exalt us. We don't seek to be known openly to the world, wanting recognition from the world or from others. Let God promote you. Otherwise, you don't seek all this recognition. We see this among ministries even today. They want recognition. We don't seek recognition. We just do everything unto the Lord. You let God do the exalting. Because who is the one who, is, who we are doing everything to and who are we accountable to? It's to Him, not to see be seen of men. We also see in John 7, verse 7, The world cannot hate you, but me it hateth, because I testify of it, that the works thereof are evil. The world's works are evil. Can you walk in the ways of the world and be right with God? No. Those are all bad works. They're going to bring destructive things. God expects us to walk in the ways of the Word of God. Remember, we're born from above. We're not walking in the ways of the world any longer. We are separate from the world. We also see over in John chapter 8, verse 41, he said, 
you do, this is what Jesus says, you do the deeds of your father. You're doing the deeds of your father. Oh, they thought their father was Abraham, but he was talking about their father being the devil. Then they said to him, we be not born of fornication, we have one father, even God. He said, if, I, if God were your father, you'd love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God, neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech, even because you cannot hear my word? He said, you are of your father, the devil. Everybody's not born again. Their spiritual father is the devil until they get born again. And he said, the lust of your father you will do. That's what they were doing. They were carrying out the works, the lust of the father. He's a murderer from the beginning, abode not in the truth. There's no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he's a liar and the father of it. If we follow anything that the devil would inspire us to do, and he will inspire us to do things contrary to the word, then we're just following after his ways. That's why putting the word of God first place is absolutely essential in your life. And we need exact, accurate knowledge of the word. In Romans chapter 2, we see over in verse 5, After thy hardness and impenitent heart, you treasure up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath, and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to every man according to his deeds or his works. Same word for works. So, that means everybody's going to be reaping something, that all the people that have hardness and impenitent heart, not walking in the ways of the word, they're going to see wrath and when the revelation of the righteous judgment comes forth. To them who by patient continuance in well-doing, which is doing the word, they're seeking for glory, for honor, and immortality, and eternal life. That's what we want to seek for. We're going to seek these things. We're not going to seek the wrong things. But to them those that are contentious and do not obey the truth. See, God wants you to be obeying the truth. But they obey unrighteousness. They're in trouble. What happens to the guy who obeys unrighteousness? Indignation and wrath tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil. God wants us to be sure that we're walking the right path and that we're not turning away and being disobedient to the truth or, or obeying unrighteousness in any ways. We also must understand that bad works will come forth from the flesh. That's why we need to deal with anything that is trying to rise up from the flesh. Romans 7, verse 8, But sin, taking occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all manner of concupiscence, cravings, longing, desires for all kinds of things. You can't be walking in the flesh. No. We walk in the flesh. We're yielding to cravings, desires, lusts of the flesh. He talks about down in verse 13. Was then that which was good made death unto me? God forbid. But sin, that it might appear sin, working death in me. Working death in me. That's what sin will do. It's actually working death in your life. That by that which is good. That sin by the commandment might be exceeding sinful because in the Old Testament law, the, the knowledge of the law brought forth the revelation of sin and they had all this sin, continual sin, until they came to the place of repentance. Well, we come down to verse 15 and he says, Paul says, in light of this, that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. Essentially what he's saying is, the things that I want to do, I'm not doing. The things that I don't want to do, I am doing. He's doing the opposite of what he wants to do. There's a problem there. And he comes down and he says that it's no more I that do it, but it's sin that's dwelling in me. Sin dwelling in us. Where is sin dwelling in us? He says, for I know that in me, that is in my flesh, in your body, dwells no good thing. That's why you cannot walk by the desires of the flesh. For to wills present with me from the inner man, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. Again, the good that I want to do, I'm not doing, and the evil that I would not want to do, I'm doing. And so he comes down here, he says, I delight in the law of God after the inward man. Then he says, I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind. It's bringing me into captivity, the law of sin, which is in my members. 
You never can walk by your own human desires. You've got to walk by the Word of God. O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? See, the sins dwell in the body, in the flesh. It's a body of death, and it's going to try to lead you in all kind of wrong paths. How am I going to conquer this? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So with the mind, I myself serve the law of God. But with the flesh, I will serve the law of sin. That means any works of the flesh, you will be serving the law of sin, which will bring curses of destruction and all kinds of negative things in your life. God instead wants us with our mind to serve the law of God. How are we going to do that? We get our mind renewed to the Word. That's why getting the Word in you and then doing what the Word says as your mind is renewed to the truth is the key where you will not walk in the ways of the flesh and you will not walk in the ways of sin in your life. And that's what God wants. He wants to conquer all these things that are working against us. We also see over in Romans chapter 13 and verse 12. The night is far spent, the day's at hand. Let us cast off the works of darkness. You know, we're to put on things, and we're also to cast out demons, but we're also to cast off all the works of darkness. Any work that is not of the Lord, God wants you to get rid of it. Let us put on the armor of light, like putting on clothes. We're going to put on the armor of light. And he comes down in verse 14, and he says, Put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what we're doing through the word in us. Make not provision or means forethought for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. We're not going to walk by the flesh. We'd be fulfilling the lust of the flesh and be walking in a wrong way. We see another work. See, works have to be dealt with in our life. And here is a work that was going on in the church. In 1 Corinthians 5.1, it's reported commonly that there's fornication among you. Such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. That's incest. It's terrible. You're puffed up and have not rather mourned that he hath done this deed might be taken away from you. You cannot allow sin to go on in the camp or it contaminates the whole deal. Instead, they needed to deal with this. Well, they weren't willing to deal with it. Now he came and he judged and he said, he comes down to it and says, he's going to deliver one to Satan for the destruction of the flesh which was what would happen because, of course, he's walking in the ways of contrary to the Word of God. When you sin fornication, you're sinning against your body, which is going to bring destruction against your flesh. That the Spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord. Does that mean that automatically his Spirit was going to be saved? No. How do we know? Because we look at this verb, and the verb tenses are very important. The verb tense here of the word saved is a subjunctive mood verb. Now what that means, the subjunctive mood means expresses things that are contrary to fact, that are conditional upon conditions being met. In other words, it's saying his spirit may be saved if the conditions are met in the day of the Lord Jesus. Well, what would that condition be? That he repented, that he turned away from that sin. In the state that he's in, he's not going to be because fornicators end up in the lake of fire. You know, the whoremongers it talks about. This guy involved in this sin would definitely end up in that situation. So that is if he would repent. God certainly does not want any sexual sin in our life because if we have sexual sin, it's going to allow curses to come upon us. As we sin against our body, it will open up all kinds of areas of problems for us in our life. We also see over in Titus. Titus chapter 1. In verse 15 it says, Unto the pure all things are pure. Unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. Even their mind and their conscience is defiled. A person can get to the place where their mind and conscience is defiled. God doesn't want that. But that's what can happen. They profess they know God, but in works they deny Him, being abominable, disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. Lots of people say they know God, but how does God know us? He knows us by our fruit. How do we know people by their fruit? What's fruit? That's the result of your works, isn't it? Whether you got good fruit or bad fruit. So if the works deny them, and we're, it says we're abominable, disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate or not approved by the Lord. That's why we want to be sure that we are a doer of the word. 
carrying out the things that he says. We see another scripture over in James, James chapter 1, down here in verse 20. The wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Does God want you to be angry and have wrath? No. The Bible talks about Ephesians 4, 31, we're supposed to put away anger. Put away these things. You should not have anger of man against people. It does not work the righteousness of God. It's going to give place to the works of the enemy. We also see over in 1 Peter, chapter 4, where in verse 3, he said, For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. We walked in lasciviousness, unbridled lust, lusts, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, abominable idolatries. God doesn't want that. We should not have any of that to do in our life. Instead, what's it say we should be doing now? It says now that in verse 2, he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lusts of men. No, we don't live that way any longer. Now we live to the will of God because we do the word. You live unto him, not unto yourselves. That's important. Because everything you're doing, remember, those are works, and we're all going to be given account for all of our works. Remember what it says over here in 2 Corinthians 5, 15? That he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves. You cannot live unto yourself. If you're living unto yourself, you're not living the Christian life. But instead, you're living unto him which died for them and rose again. You're living unto the Lord in all that you do, following him, being obedient in all the things that he tells you to do. That's what God wants. Another thing we see, these are all negative works, bad works, and we see the problems that come. James 2, 9 says, if you have respect to persons, you commit sin and are convinced of the law as transgressors. God does not want us to have respect to persons. We need to treat everybody the same. We can't show partiality to one and, and different, different actions to another. No. We're not to have that. We're to be no respect to persons whatsoever. Make sure that you don't have respect to persons in the way you're dealing with people. That is important. We also see over in Second Peter, chapter 2, over here in verse 8, that righteous man dwelling among them and seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. He's talking here about Lot. Otherwise, the unlawful deeds were vexing his soul, all of the works. The Bible talks about how lawlessness is going to abound in the last days. And as lawlessness abounds, if you allow yourself to be around it, it will vex your righteous soul and it pulled them all down. I mean, Lot, remember what happened there? The daughters, they didn't want to leave. You know, the angel had to grab and pull them out. The sons-in-law, they ended up staying. You know, they got wiped out. His wife was so taken by the, that she turned back, turns into a pillar of salt because of all the effects of it. You gotta take a stand against all that is contrary to the word of God. Otherwise, all these unlawful deeds, they'll affect you. And this is why we're going to see in the last days people are going to be vexed in their soul and they're going to turn away. This is such a sad statement, but it's the truth from the Word of God. Matthew 24, 12, Because iniquity, which is lawlessness, shall abound. The love of many, that's not the few, that's the many, the majority, shall wax cold. They're going to be in trouble. If the lukewarmer spewed out of his mouth, you know the cold are in trouble. Why are, they, why are they going to get this way? This is talking about Christians because it's talking about the love, the agape love. That's only talking about Christians. This is not talking about Jews or Israelites in there. It's talking about Christians. Their good life's going to, their, their good love of many, that's a whole lot, are going to wax cold. That's why you've got to guard yourself from anything that's of the world, anything that's lawless, anything that's contrary to the Word of God. It is going to take a toll upon you in your life. We cannot allow that. Look over at 2 John, in verse 10. 
2 John and verse 10. It says, if there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, talking about the doctrine of Christ back here, it says, whosoever transgresses and abides not in the doctrine of Christ doesn't have God. He that abides in the doctrine of Christ, he has both the Father and the Son. And what's the doctrine? This word means the teaching of Christ. It means we better do things exactly as line with what Jesus said. If you don't do things in line with the teaching of Jesus Christ, then you're not abiding in the doctrine of Christ. That's a problem. We see that happening. People are deviating from the Word of God in the church world today. If there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. No, you don't want to have anything to do with people that are not going, you're going to witness to them, but you're not going to bring them into your house. Don't bring them into your house and have fellowship with that person whatsoever. We see over in 3 John, 3 John, verse 10. Wherefore, if I come, I'll remember his deeds, all his works. This is the same word, which he doeth. And what's he talking about? He's talking about this guy. We're at Diotrephes, who loved to have the preeminence among them, otherwise he was always exalting himself. He didn't receive them. He wouldn't receive them. I'll remember his deeds that he doeth, prating against us with malicious words. Can you believe someone who's the head of a church giving malicious words? That's terrible. And not content therewith, neither doth he himself receive the brethren and forbid them that they would cast them out of the church. I just had a person even tell me on the phone today from another state how a pastor and an associate pastor were yelling and screaming at this person, try accusing them of some things that she said she never did. And she said, bring my accusers to prove it and they've never done it. Can you imagine that kind of thing going on? It goes on. It's not right. It's wrong. Malicious words. Make sure you don't speak any malicious or wrong or evil words. Make sure you only speak right words. These are the last days, remember, and it's going to get darker and darker in the world, while the church, the real remnant, is going to get lighter and lighter and we're going to be filled with the glory of God because we're going to walk the straight, narrow path. In Jude, verse 14, Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with 10,000 of his saints. What's he coming to do? He's going to execute judgment. The first coming was to save. The second coming is to bring judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them, their ungodly deeds, their ungodly works which they've ungodly committed all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against them. All these people that have spoken against Jesus, they are going to have a tough time. All the, the judgment is going to come upon them. Don't ever speak anything against the Lord. Matthew chapter 12, don't ever blame him. He's, de he's never the problem. He's always the answer. Matthew chapter 12, down in verse 36. I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, shall they give account thereof in the day of judgment. That's pretty powerful. We're going to give account. What's idle word? Idle word refers to one which is not working, free from labor, shunning labor, that you're not, it's not working for you. So every wor word that's really not working for your be benefit or working for God, that men shall speak, they're going to give account thereof in the day of judgment. We want to be sure we're speaking right words. Do not speak words that are contrary to the Word of God. There will be judgment coming upon them. God expects us to use our mouth to speak what He wants. Matthew chapter 20, verse 3. It says He went out the third hour and He saw others standing idle in the marketplace. They weren't working. Same word that we just saw about words. They weren't working. And so... He tells them, there, whatever's right, I'll give thee. And so they went their way and they went out. He goes out the sixth and ninth hour, same thing. About eleventh hour, he goes out, finds others standing idle, not working. Says to him, why stand you here all the day idle, not working? They weren't working for the Lord. They weren't out there ministering for the Lord. What does God want? He wants us to be working for him. Remember, our life belongs to the Lord. We're bought with a price. We're not our own. We're a purchased possession. Not only 
are you belong to him, whose I am, as Paul said, but also whom I serve. You are to serve him. And you're going to serve him by sharing the gospel, doing the works of God, speaking forth, out there reaching people to see people come to the Lord. And that's what he wants. We see another thing in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 13. Here it's speaking about these ones who had cast off their first faith, as it said. They're going to have judgment. And with all, they learn to be idle. They're not working. They're wandering about from house to house, and not only idle or not working, but they're tattlers and busybodies, speaking things that they ought not. Don't let yourself ever be one of those. We don't want to be a busybody or whatever. You know, the world is full of busybodies. You know how they're operating as busybodies today? They're on Facebook and they're on Twitter throughout the whole day. And all they do is find out everybody's business and make their little comments and all things. Even read a thing, saw a thing on the internet, just said, just in a little thing, said that 1.5 billion now are all involved in, in Facebook. Just think, they're doing this all day long. How much time are they spending on these time-wasting things that make you be idle for the things of God, make you be busybodies? <laughs> hey, we've got to watch that we don't let ourselves be time wasters. We're supposed to redeem the time. Don't let yourself waste your time. Make your time count. You know, God wants us to make sure that we're walking the walk of the Lord and doing the things that he says. We also see over in 2 Timothy, we hear that we're all talking about the negative works so far. We'll get to the positive works in a moment. 2 Timothy 4.14, he talked about Alexander the coppersmith that did me much evil. He did evil to him. The Lord reward him according to his works. That's what's going to happen. Whatever a man sows, he's going to reap. We do evil things, it's going to come back on us. You're to do unto men as you would have them do unto you. What a man sows, he's going to reap. That's why you've got to be sure you're always sowing love. You can't be sowing things contrary to that, or else you're going to be reaping evil things coming back upon you. Now, if we've had some bad works, or maybe we even have some bad works right now, God wants you to repent. He wants you to turn away from them. But he'll give you space to repent, too. Here's the case about Jezebel. And it says in verse 21, he said, I gave her space to repent of her fornication, she repented not. Whatever kind of sin areas we might have or works that are contrary, God gives us space to repent. He calls us to repent and so we'll turn away from it. We should always have, give, give you know, we have space to repent. We work, other people should have space to repent too. He says, behold, I'll cast her into a bed and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. That means those people that will not repent of their deeds, they're going to end up in the great tribulation with all kinds of problems. That's why we better be sure that we're walking the straight and narrow path and following the way of the Lord. So what does God want for us? You now are light in the Lord. You now have been born again. You've received Jesus. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16 says, Let your light so shine before men. You don't hide it under a bushel that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. You show forth the works that you're doing, not to be seen of men or to be exalted in the eyes of men. You just don't hide them. You just care about your business and they're going to see your works because people are going to see what you're doing. You let your light shine. You're, just, you're, you're not going to hide it again. But again, it's not trying to make people see it so they'll, you know, uh, think about something about you. No, no, this is going to glorify your Father when they see the works that you do. You don't compromise for anything. We also see the works of God. Matthew chapter 11, verse 2. John heard in prison that the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples. He wanted to, he still even wasn't, John the one who prepared the way, and yet he kind of got off track at one point because he goes on and he says, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? He's the one that said out of his mouth, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And now he's wondering, well, are you really the one? 
Shows the devil was even working on him. John the Baptist. That's why you got to watch. The devil doesn't ever work on you and get you off track. Or do we look for another? Jesus said, go and show John again those things which you do hear and see. Again, otherwise he must have known them before. He must have forgot them or something. He says, go show them again. He said, the blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. Exactly what it says in the Old Testament that the, the, the Messiah would do when he would come. That's exactly what Jesus did. Otherwise, the works prove who I am. I am. He is the one. And he came and did the mighty works of the Lord, showing forth who he was. God wants us, of course, to go forth and do the same works. The Bible says in John chapter 14, over in verse 12, you and I are to do the works of the Lord. Verily, verily, I say unto he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. God wants you to do the mighty works of the Lord. Cast out the demons, minister healing, see people be set free from all kinds of bondages, even raising of the dead, praise God. He says, and greater than the works than these shall you do. Greater means, there's no word for works in here. It's not there. It was added by the translator. See, it's italicized. It just means greater here. And this particular word means just simply a larger amount. Larger. It can mean larger or greater. In this case, it would be great, larger. Because why? We've got a whole lifetime now to do the works of the Lord. You and I can be doing works every day of our life. Praying, ministering to people, passing out tracts, talking to people about Jesus, ministering deliverance, ministering healing, doing the mighty works of the Lord. And it's important that you understand you're going to be rewarded for your works. Matthew chapter 16. We pick up over down here in verse 24. This is where Jesus said, Let any man come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross, follow me. Whoever will save his soul realm life, is what this is talking about, he's going to destroy it. Whoever will lose or destroy his soul realm life for my sake shall find it. And then he comes to verse 26, he says, What is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Nothing he can give for it, can he? He says, For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of the Father with his angels. Then shall he reward every man according to his works. You and I are going to be rewarded according to our works. That's why we want to be sure that we have the works of God going forth. And he's expecting us to do this. In Mark chapter 13, verse 34, it says this, the son, For the Son of Man is a man taking a far journey. Jesus is the Son of Man. He went and took a far journey. It says, Who left his house. Well, what's the house he's talking about? Who is the house? The church. Jesus is the cornerstone of the house. So that man he left from here and went back to heaven. And you and I are living stones in the house of God. And he gave authority to his servants and every man his work. So God has given work for every one of us. He's expecting us to carry out the work of the Lord. That's why he wants you to do exactly what he says. As you carry out the work of the Lord, you should be doing the things he wants you to do. He comes on, he says, Watch ye therefore, you know not what the master of the house, when the master of the house cometh at even or midnight or cock crowing or in the morning, lest suddenly, coming suddenly, he finds you sleeping. Now well, that's someone who's not awake. It means they're not doing the things that God wants us to do. He has works for us to do. It's pretty clear in Mark 16, 17, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. Don't shy away from casting out demons just because most everybody doesn't believe it out there. Take the time to teach them, the ones that will receive, then you can minister to them and do it and continue to do it and don't back off of it whatsoever. They shall speak with new tongues. It's fought against in the majority of the body of Christ, but speaking with tongues is for us. Everybody is to speak in tongues. God wants you to speak in tongues. Do not hold anything back. And he talks down here about laying hands on the sick and they shall recover. You've got hands. God wants to operate through the hand, your hands. The power of God will flow out of you into people as you lay hands on people. He wants you to go and do the works of God. 
told him to do this. Well, after the Lord had spoken to him, he was received up into heaven, sat on the right hand of God. And then what? They went forth, preaching everywhere the word of God. The Lord working with them, confirming the word with signs following. People got delivered. People got healed. People got set free from the bondages of the enemy. And he wants us to do the very same thing. God wants you to be a doer of his word. Every time you're doing the word, you're doing the work that he wants you to do. In John chapter 3, verse 21, He that doeth truth, that's the word, cometh to the light, that his deeds, that's all of his works, may be made manifest that they're wrought in God. Anytime you're doing truth, which is the word, you are doing the works of God. We even see that shown again over in James chapter 1 when it talks about being a doer of the word and not a hearer only. Verse 22 says that we're all to become doers of the word and not hearers only, otherwise we deceive ourselves. As we're a doer of the word, it says in verse 25, the guy who looks into the perfect law of liberty, the word, and continues therein, he's doing the word, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. Notice, it didn't say a doer of the word now. It says a doer of the work. It's interesting. When you do the word, you're doing the work. That's why it's important to be a doer of the word. Whenever you're doing God's word, you're doing the work, whether it's ministering to other, some, someone else or whether you're just doing it even in your own life. When you're doing the word for yourself, you're doing the work for God to work out the things in your own life, to bring forth all the promises and bring the change and fruit and all the things that he wants in our life. This man shall be blessed in his, the word deed shouldn't be there. You got it totally backwards here. It's the word poiesis, which means your doings. That's why Young's brings it out. A doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his doings. You'll be blessed. That's why God wants you to be a consistent doer of the Word of God and carry out the things that He wants. Also, we're going to be doing the things that God wants us to do. A good work is to be laboring after the things that count. It says, labor not, work not for the meat or the, the food which perishes. But instead, for that meat or food, spiritual food it's talking about, which endures unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. So God wants us to labor for that which endures. That means all the things we're doing of the Word of God. Unto everlasting life. Put the Word of God first place and do all the things that he says. We see over in Acts chapter 9, Acts chapter 9, in verse 36. There was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and alms deeds, which she did. She had all these work, things that she was doing. She ended up being sick and she was died. And of course, Peter came and she was raised from the dead. They were showing him all the coats, the garments, and all the things that she made. She was a worker. She was producing things. That was good. God wants us to be producing. Men work, women work. It's good. Here she was producing all these things. God, because of her works and the things that she did, she was full of good works and alms deed. She got raised from the dead. I would say that her works were taken account of by the Lord. That's why she got raised from the dead. See, that'll bring blessings from the Lord when you do the works of God and you work for Him. Acts chapter 10 Verse 35, in every nation he feareth him and worketh righteousness. He that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. That tells us something else. When we're working righteousness in our life, doing righteousness, we will be accepted with him and having the fear of the Lord. That's what we want to see in this nation and every nation throughout the world. But only those that have the fear of the Lord and are working righteousness will be accepted. The rest of them will not be. That's what's going to happen. We see in Acts chapter 26, over in verse 20. He showed first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem throughout all the coasts of Judea, and then to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. Notice that. First they were supposed to repent, change their ways, change their mind, 
turn to God, so now they're turning to God and seeking after Him and following His ways. But it wasn't just because they said they were going to do it. They had to show forth something and do works, meet or showing forth rep the repentance in their life. Otherwise, if we confess our sin and we repent of something, evidence that we have repented and we're walking right is because we're doing the works of God. We're going to do the things He wants and we'll have the fruit in our life that shows true repentance. Otherwise, if we're continuing to walk in sin ways, even though we confess our sin, but we go back and do it again, we, we confessed it, go back again. I say I repent, go back and do it again. No works. Have we have real rep repentance? No. Repentance is shown by the works, which would be the change that comes because we're now doing the things that God wants us to do. We also see in Romans chapter 13, over in verse 3, well, verse 1 says, Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. There's no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, the authority, this means, exousia, resist the ordinance of God. They that resist shall receive to themselves judgment. That's why you obey the laws. You obey the laws. Unless it's contrary to the word of God, you obey the laws. Now, any law that's contrary to the word of God, you don't. Remember, we, we obey God, not man. So you never compromise anything. Rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the, of the power or the authority? But that which is good, thou shalt do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. Follow the law, you're not going to have any problems. You break the law, you will have problems. We should be doing the good, you know, a terror to a, uh, the ruler is not a terror to good works. If we're doing the right thing, there'll be only problems, no problems. Just follow the law, obey the law, and you'll be blessed. Romans 13, 10. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Love works. God wants you to walk in love towards everybody. If any of your works, your doings, or your actions were not in line with love, it's not good. You shouldn't be doing anything negative, ill to your neighbor whatsoever. We should only be showing forth love. Doing the things that God would want, you know, the love is going to do what? It's going to do to you as I would have you do back to me. So I'm not going to do anything to anybody that I wouldn't want them to do the very same thing back to me. Love is the command. You and I have been commanded to walk in love. John 13, 34, and 35. A new commandment I give you, that you would love one another. By this shall all men know that you're my disciples, if we have love one to another. Your works of love is so important. Remember, the thing that abides is love. He wants us to always operate in love at all times in our life. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. He says, Am I not an apostle? Am I not free? Have I not seen Jesus Christ our Lord? Are not ye my work in the Lord? The answer is, yeah, he's an apostle. He's free. He self did see Jesus. It appeared to him. And they were his work in the Lord. That means the people that you're ministering to are your work in the Lord. That's why you want to be out there ministering to people and helping them. Verse 13. Do you not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple, and they that wait at the altar are partakers with the altar? So that means that those people who are preaching the gospel in the ministry, they live of the things that come in from the preaching of the gospel. That's why, of course, receive tithes and offerings, which comes to meet all of the needs of the ministry all the expenses and so forth. We see all in, uh, in fact, verse 14, it goes on, it says, So hath the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live the gospel. That's the way they live. In chapter 15, we see over in verse 58, he says this, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. God wants us to abound in the work of the Lord. That means we're doing it just continually, overflowing in our life. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, God takes notice of everything that we're doing, and it is important unto Him. We also see a scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, in verse 3. He says, If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. 
We're to be clothed, remember, with the garments of God, putting all the things of God on us through the word of God. We that are in this tabernacle do groan being burdened, not for, not, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that hath wrought or worked this in a, of us for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given us the earnest of the Spirit. He that has wrought, this word means, is a form of the word work. It means who has worked this for us or performed or accomplished this for us. It's God. What's that tell you? Everything that's being done in your life is God doing it. How does God do it? Through the word. That's why in the measure that you're hearing and doing the word is the measure that God is working in your life. If you're not doing the word, he's not doing anything because he is the word and he's going to do things through the word of God. That's why he wants us, as we see over in Philippians, chapter 2, we're told in verse 12 that you and I are to be working out our own salvation. It says here, verse 12, Wherefore, my beloved, as you've always obeyed, well, that's what we want, always obeyed, not once in a while, always obeyed whatever God's word says, not in my, as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, it's easy to do something when you're around people, but how about when you're all by yourself? Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. The word work out, present tense. Present tense, which means ongoing work. Imperative mood, which means it's a command. Middle voice, which means you're working it out for your own benefit. That's what the middle voice is referring to here. And so you are working out for yourself continually in obedience to his command your own salvation in order to see it come forth. That's your deliverance, all the, all the promises of God, the blessings that have come forth in all areas with fear and trembling. But how is this happening? It is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So who's doing the work? God is. But how can he do the work? Because of your obedience to do the word. If you're not obeying and doing the word, is he doing the work? Nope. Remember, as you do the word, you're a doer of the work. So God can accomplish this work in your life. That's why being a doer of the word as consistently as possible is absolutely important in your life. Also, whenever you're going out there to do the works of God, don't think it's by you all by yourself. It says in 2 Corinthians 6, 1, we then as workers together with him, I beseech you that you receive not the grace of God in vain. You and I are working with God, workers together with Him. You're working, He's working. If you're not working, He's not working through you. He's probably finding somebody else to work through, but He wants to work through you and me. We are workers together with the Lord, doing the things that God wants us to do. We also see over in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, we pick up down here in verse 8, where he said, God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, you hear me pray this all the time, may abound to every good work. See, what you're going to do, you're going to have abundance. God wants you to use the abundance you have over and above the tithes and offerings or whatever, the offerings to give where he wants you to give them, to abound to every good work, to help support the work of the ministry. Praise God. And as you do that, you're going to be blessed of the Lord. And he also talks about in verse 11, being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causes us thanksgiving to God. See, when you give out to others, it is going to give thanksgiving to God, and you are going to be blessed by the Lord. You're going to be enriched or made rich with the riches of Christ. The things that he brings forth and his blessings will come forth because of your bountiful, giving out to minister to others. Over in Galatians, we also see as we're talking about our works, Galatians chapter 6, verse 3. If a man think himself to be something when he's nothing, he deceiveth himself. Don't ever think of yourself as something. You just think of yourself not, not more highly than you should, but just as a servant. Remember, the greatest is who? The servant of all. You're just a servant. That's the way you think of yourself. Otherwise, you deceive yourself. Let every man prove his own work, 
and then he'll have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. You're going to prove your own work. It gives you a rejoicing, you know, a real, uh, a, you have a joy from the inside of you because, hey, I'm doing, I'm doing the things of God. I'm seeing the fruit. I'm carrying out what God wants. I'm, I'm a, a vessel for him to flow through. You're going to prove your own work. Then you'll have rejoicing in himself. God wants us to be out there doing the work of God. He says also in verse 10, As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, but especially, he says, unto them that are of the household of faith. He wants you to do good. This means to work, do good, work, do the work, to all doing everything that God wants us to do, carrying out the work of the ministry. You see, God has called you unto good works. Christians have become an island to themselves and they don't reach out to other people or are making a mistake. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto what? Unto good works, which God hath before ordained or prepared that we should walk in them. God's prepared for you to walk in them and to carry out and do the good works of the Lord. You are His workmanship. Now we also see that he is at work in the church world today. The true apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, their job is for the perfecting of the saints. That the saints will be perfected, they'll be furnished, they'll be equipped, they'll grow up in the things of God for the work of the ministry. Who's doing the work of the ministry? The saints. That's every one of us. Not, it's not all on, on just the fivefold ministry. They don't do everything. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, they can never do everything. They just carry out their function, that's all. Every one of us are the saints that do the work of the ministry. God wants to use you in reaching out to people. And what's it going to produce? For the edifying of the body of Christ. You're going to bring edification, strengthening, and building up to the body of Christ. And that's what he wants. And how long we do this? Till we all come to the unity of the faith and the precise, correct, accurate knowledge of the Son of God to the perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. You and I are going to do the mighty works of the Lord. And when you do these things, God wants you to be fruitful in every good work. How's that going to happen? Because you do what He says. He talks about being filled in Colossians 1.9 with all knowledge, with the knowledge of His will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. What's that tell us? He wants you to get knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. How do you get that? From the Word and by doing the Word and applying it in your life. What's going to be the result of that? That you might walk worthy of the Lord and all pleasing. You'll please Him in your walk. But what else? You'll be fruitful in every good work. Not some, every good work. God wants us to be fruitful in everything we do. Don't waste your time in anything that's not fruitful. Make sure you're doing the things God wants you to do. And as you're walking according to His ways, you will be fruitful in every good work because He wants to use you mightily. Just think if all the Christians throughout the world were doing the works of God and out witnessing and ministering to people, we'd be winning the world, wouldn't we? We've got to, every, the Christians have to rise up and get involved in doing the things that God says. Colossians chapter 3, verse 9. Lie not one to another, seeing that you've put off the old man with his deeds. That tells you something, his doings or his actions. So the old man has his actions. What's that? That's the flesh, the human being flesh, walking after the ways of the flesh. No, we're not going to do that. What are we supposed to do? We're to put on the new man, renewed in knowledge, after the image of him, and we're going to walk and do the works of God as we follow his ways. We see in verse 17, Whatsoever you do in word or deed, which is work, same word, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. What do we do? We do everything in the name of Jesus, in the name of the Lord Jesus. And we're doing everything in word or whether in our work. So you're going to be speaking things in word, doing what the word says, or you're going to be doing works in line with the word of God, carrying it out. That's what we want to do throughout our life. Down in verse 23, he says, Whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Don't do things unto men. You're going to be serving men, but that's not where your, your motivation is doing it unto the Lord as you're ministering unto men. Always do things unto the Lord, as unto the Lord. 
You keep your eyes on the Lord. You do what the Word says. You always do what's right. Knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. It means you're going to get a blessing. You're going to get a reward for doing the things that God wants you to do when you serve the Lord Christ. Also, as you're a doer of this word, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, down here in verse 17, he says this, Comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. We see this go, go together a lot of times, haven't we? In every good word and work. So we get the word in us, we do the word, but we also do the work that he has for us to do. We carry it out and minister for the Lord. We also see down in 1 Thessalonians, or 1 Timothy, I mean, chapter 5, verse 10. He says, this one who is well reported for, of, for good works. She brought up children, lodged the strangers, washed the saints' feet, relieved the afflicted, have diligently followed every good work. That's what God wants. Whatever the things God wants you to be doing, diligently follow every good work. You're going to be rewarded for it. We want to see the rewards. We don't want to come up and when we stand before the Lord and what happened to your works? You know, We haven't done the things that he wants us to do. In fact, we even see in, in uh, Timothy, 1 Timothy 6, even speaks here in verse 18. <clears throat> they that do, the, they that be rich in good works. That's what we want to be rich in. Not rich in the things of this world. Rich in the works of God. Carrying out the things that He wants. Ready to distribute, willing to communicate or have fellowship, doing good, doing all the things that God wants us to do. The works of the Lord are so important in our life. Over in 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 15, it tells us that we are to, King James says, study. The word actually is the word spadazo, which means be diligent. Young's corrects the error. Be diligent to show thyself approved unto God. That means you are responsible to do this. And when it talks about this, by the way, this word being diligent, it is a command. It is not just a nice little suggestion. God is commanding you and me to show ourselves or to present ourselves. Actually, this is a word which really means to present. You're to present yourself approved or accepted unto God. You're, you're presenting yourself before Him. Well, how am I going to be presenting himself, myself that I'm accepted before God? Two things. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. This is a laborer. Hey, I've been out there being a laborer for the Lord. I've been doing the things that he told me to do. I've been ministering to people. I've been working the works of God. I've been you know, sharing the gospel with people. I've been casting out the demons, ministering, healing, doing the works of God. But I'm not going to be ashamed because I've been doing them. And rightly dividing the word of truth because I got the word in me. See how word and work goes together consistently? Doesn't it? It says, shun profane babblings. They'll increase unto more ungodliness. We want to get away from all of that. Stay away from things that are a waste of time. Verse 19, he comes down and says, Nevertheless, the foundation of God stands sure, having the seal. The Lord knows them that are His. And remember, the ones that are His are walking in His ways. Let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. God expects us all, this is a command, by the way, not a suggestion, imperative mood. He commands you and me to depart from iniquity. What's iniquity? It's a word, adikia, which means unrighteousness. God commands you and me to depart from unrighteousness. You can't be walking unrighteous. We saw the workers of unrighteousness, they end up getting thrust out. They, they don't enter in whatsoever. In a great house, there's not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, some to honor, some to dishonor. He says, if a man therefore purge himself from these, the unrighteousness, he will be a vessel unto honor, which is what we end up seeing produced in our life, sanctified and holy, meet or useful for the master's use, prepared unto every good work. See, you want to be prepared unto every good work? Get rid of all the unrighteousness in your life. Get the word in you. Get yourself diligent. Be a workman for the Lord. Rightly divide the word of truth. And get rid of all this unrighteous stuff. 
and purge out everything. Go through the cleansing process so you can be a vessel unto honor. You'll be sanctified. You'll be useful for the Lord. You'll be prepared for every good work. That's what he wants to accomplish for every one of us. In chapter 3, verse 17, that the man of God, this verse 16 talks about how the word of God, all scripture, inspired by God, profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction, and righteousness. What's the result of it? That the man of God may be perfect. We're going on to perfection in the Lord, the Bible says. We're going to be, as we do these things, thoroughly furnished for what? All good works. If you're going to grow up in the things of God, you're going to become a workman for the Lord. You're going to be carrying out the things that he calls you to do. 2 Timothy 4, verse 5. Watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist. You may not have the call or the, of the office of an evangelist, but you can still do the work of an evangelist by sharing the gospel, talking to people about Jesus, passing out tracts, be helping lead people to the Lord. Every one of us are to do a work of the evangelist, making full proof of thy ministry. Now, in th these, wor these works that he's talking about, Titus brings out several things. Titus chapter 2, verse 7. He says, In all things show thyself a pattern of good works. This is your life, your pattern. You know, a pattern means this is what you're car carrying on. It's not like, oh, I did it, you know, two years ago. Well, that's not a pattern. Otherwise, you, this is the way your lifestyle is. You know, your pattern of good works continually. Down in verse 13 looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, he might redeem us from all iniquity or lawlessness and purify, make us clean, unto himself a peculiar people. This means a people selected by God for his own possession. And what else about him? Zealous of good works. Are you zealous for the works of God? Or are you, well, if I, if I have time, it'll, I'll work, if I can work it into my schedule, <laughs> no, that's not the right attitude. Zealous of good works looks like you're looking for doing the works of God all the time. You're looking for people to witness. You're looking for people to minister to. You're looking to do the things that God wants us to do. Titus 3.1, he says, put them in mind to be subject to principalities, powers to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work. God wants you ready. Are you ready every day to do whatever God wants you to do? That's what he expects. Titus 3.8, he says here again, these things I will that thou affirm constantly. He says you're supposed to affirm this constantly, that they who have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. That's pretty important if you're supposed to affirm something constantly. Do the works, do the works, do the works. All the time we should be Shouting out to everybody. Make sure you're maintaining the good works of the Lord. Verse 14. He says, Let ours also learn to maintain good works for necessary uses, that they, that they be not unfruitful. See, when you do the works, that shows the fruitfulness in your life. And that's what God's looking for. Even in your own life, as you mix your faith with the word of God that you hear and you are entering into, there's a spiritual rest that he has for you. Because it's the rest that remains of the people of God, which is the spiritual rest of going to possess the promises, entering into the spiritual rest. It says, he that is entered into his rest, that's possessing the promises. In fact, we'll show you that back here in verse 1 and 2. Let us therefore fear, the fear of the Lord, lest a promise, all the promises, being left us of entering into his rest. What does that tell you? The way you enter into his rest is by possessing the promises, the spiritual promises of God. That any of you should seem to come short of it. God doesn't want any of us short, come short of possessing the promises of God in our life. Every one of us are to do that. That's how you enter into the rest. And how are you going to do it? Through the word, the gospels preached to you as well as unto them. But the word preached didn't profit them to bring them into the rest. Why? because they didn't mix their faith with them, it hurt it. If you mix your faith with what you hear, you're going to do the Word. You're going to speak and act upon the Word and carry it out. And now he says, as these guys were doing this, 
He says, he that's entered into his rest, he's possessed all the promises, he's been working out his salvation. He also hath, the word actually means to be at rest. He's rested, not ceased. He's rested from his own works. It's the same, see this is the word rest here, katapos, katapaosis. You can see that this is a similar one, just a verb form, katapao. It means he's come to the place of he's rested from his works, as Young's brings out, just as God did from his. Otherwise, when am I going to rest spiritually? When you possess all the promises of God, then you'll have rest, you'll have rest from all your works. You and I are to possess the promises of God in our life. That's why it says, let us labor, be diligent to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. That tells you what's going to stop you. Unbelief. What's going to get you into it? Operating in faith. Doing the word. Going in and possessing all the promises in your life. We also see Hebrews 6.1. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on into perfection. You and I are to go into perfection in the Lord. We're going to grow up to total maturity, not laying again the foundation. And what's the foundation? The first one is repentance from dead works. Anything that is not profitable or not fruitful, get rid of it. It's a time waster. It is wasting your time, wasting your effort. It's not producing anything. All dead works need to be eliminated. You only want to do the things that God wants you to do. Hebrews 6.10 God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. He doesn't forget when you've ministered to people. Don't think that he forgets. No, no. Which you showed toward his name and that you have ministered to the saints in the past and do minister. See, it's not as if I did it in the past only. No. Do minister means present tense, means I'm continually ministering. Otherwise, this is what I've done in the past. This is what I'm doing today and continually. This is my life. I'm ministering to people to help them. In fact, what does God want us to do? He wants us to stir everyone up to good works. Certainly this message should stir you up to what good works. Proverbs 10, 24, let us consider one another to provoke or incite them or stir them up unto love and to good works. Always operate in love. Always be out there doing the good works of the Lord. That's what God wants. Now we see over in James, Chapter 3, James chapter 3 over in verse 13. Who's a wise man and dude with knowledge among you? Hey, we all want to be, hey, me, you know, I want to be known that way. Well, how are you going to be known that way? Let him show or prove, essentially, give some evidence out of a good manner of life, conduct, and behavior, this word means, his works with meekness of wisdom. What shows you're wise and you're endued with knowledge? Because the proof of you, it's shown out of your life, out of your conduct, out of your behavior, his works. You're doing the works of God. You're just, you're, the works of God are just coming out of you all the time. With meekness of wisdom, that's what he wants. Now, if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not, lie not, lie not against the truth, what are you doing? That wisdom's not coming from God. That's coming from the earthly, sensual, and devilish. That's the devil working. Envy and strife is there's confusion in every evil work. There's evil works too. That's why you can't give place to the devil. Don't do anything that gives place to the devil. Envy and strife, anything that's contrary, bitterness, envy, strife, any of these things. You've got to get rid of them all. And he goes on and says, the wisdom that's from above is first pure, peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy, and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy. That's what God wants. That's going to show forth the works of God. Mercy, good fruits, without partiality, without hypocrisy, all these things. They're going to be producing good things. God wants you and me to do the mighty works of the Lord. Second John, verse 8. He says, look to yourselves that you lose not the things which you have wrought or worked. That's quite a revealing thing. You can lose things that you have worked. Lose means to destroy it. Don't destroy things that you have worked. 
but that we receive a full reward. If so, if you destroy things you've worked, you won't get a reward for it. You won't get your full reward. Make sure you don't do any destructive things. It's possible to lose things that you have wrought if you destroy it. Over in 3 John, verse 5. Beloved, thou doest faithfully whatsoever thou doest, or whatever you're working, again it's the word work, to the brethren and the strangers. Just do it faithful. Be faithful to minister to people. Be faithful to do the things that God wants. Not only to the believers, the brethren, but also to the strangers. That's what you're going to do. God wants us to be doing these things. Now in Revelation, we see how important it is. In every one of the churches, he says the first statement out of the mouth is to them. He says, I know thy works. Or more literally, it's a, it's a perfect tense verb, I have known thy works. He knows this is the time when the judgment's coming on the churches. I've known thy works. God wants you to be doing These guys, they weren't doing too good. He had something against them because they left their first love. He said, repent from whence thou art fallen and repent and do the first works. Get back on track doing the works of God. He wants you to get back on track and do the things that he says. He does come along and says how he hates the deeds of the Nicolaitans. Nicolaitan comes from Nicola and laity. Laity means people. Nicol refers to conquer. So it means to conquer the people. Who would be conquering the people? It was the ministry people who were being Jezebels and controlling the people. Where do you think it got the so-called clergy and the laity? It's like a separation. It's ridiculous. There is no such thing. All of us are brethren in the Lord, sisters and brothers in the Lord. All this thing that is, these, these guys think they're something up here. No. Anybody that's in the ministry full-time with a ministry gift, He's just a, all he is is just a believer and a servant like everybody else. <coughs> Excuse me, everybody else. And he's not to think of himself like he's anything special and control and dominate people. We see that happen in a lot of churches today. It's a major problem. All these guys are carrying on the deeds of the Nicolaitans, conquering the people. Big mistake. Revelation 2.19 he said, I know thy works, charity, service, faith, patience, thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Your works. Your works are more and more. Otherwise, they're more than what they were at the first. You did a lot of the first. Now you're doing more. Hey, you're doing really good. That's what God wants. Otherwise, we increase and abound in all these things. And look what it says, if we will keep his works to the end. He that overcomes or conquers and carries off the victory and keeps my works unto the end. Aha. He's going to get authority over the nations. Now, that's pretty important. We want to keep his works to the end. We're not going to back off whatsoever. We're going to get, you conquer and overcome, that person would give authority over the nations. In chapter 3, over in verse 2, he said here, be watchful and strengthen the things that remain that are ready to die. This is a person who had things were dying out. That's not good. Don't let things die out. For I have not found thy works perfect. The word perfect is not a good translation. It means filled up or fulfilled, made full or fill up. As Young's brings it out correctly, I have not found thy works fulfilled or filled up. That means there's a, there's a, a works that all of us are to do. Have the works that you're supposed to do been fulfilled? Are they getting filled up? Or have you just, are you just kind of getting started and haven't done too much? God wants us to be doing the works of God and carrying them out every day of our life. It is so important. Because when the Lord comes back, one last scripture, what's he going to be doing? We're going to be rewarded. He says, I come quickly and my reward's with me to give every man according as his work shall be. Every man's going to get it. There's one other scripture we need to bring out, though, I guess. We brought out the last time, but this is important. So well, it says, everything sounds great. I'm ready for rewards for my works. Well, you also have to understand this, too. 2 Corinthians 5.10 says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, all these works, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. 
oh, you mean I'm going to also be accountable for all the bad works? That's right. I guess we've got to go to one other scripture. What's going to happen with the bad works? 1 Corinthians 3, verse 14 says, If any man's work abide, because it's talking about the fire is going to try every man's work, what sort it is. All of them are going to be put to the test. If it abides that he's built thereon, he gets a reward. Great, those are the good works, right? What about the bad ones? If any man's work shall be burned, that, man, that was a bad one. He's going to suffer loss. He's going to suffer loss in some capacity. We don't want to be suffering loss. He himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. You'll still make it. And you're not going to go to hell, but you are going to suffer loss. We don't want to suffer loss. That's why we want to be doing the works. This is the proving time now. This is the time to carry out the things of God and do all that God wants you to do. Your works are extremely important. The bad works, the good works, we see the results, we see what happens. Make sure that from this point forward, you're going to do the good works of the Lord as you're doing the Word of God. Say this with me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your Word that brings revelation of the works of God and how important they are. I am a doer of the Word, being a doer of the work, working out my own salvation, and as I'm doing the works, that you've called me to do, I will be a workman that's not ashamed. I thank you. My works are going to be filled up. I'm going to be showing forth that I am a wise man, endued with knowledge because of all the works that have been done. Because I'm doing the Word and I'm working for the Lord. I thank you, Lord. I make the decision. I will do your works. I will, your works. I will follow what this word says. I will, I will the obey the word of God and do the works of God all the days of my life. Of my life. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for much fruit from this series of messages as we take hold of what your word says and how important the works of God are to you. Thank you, Father, that as we carry this out, that we then will hear the good statement, well done, thou good and faithful servant, enter in the joy of the Lord. Thank you, Father, that we're going to be always prepared and ready to do the work of the Lord every day of our life. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise God. Hallelujah.